Hi, everybody. Welcome to Happy Hour Live on Brew Sports. Welcome inside the studio. I hope your Wednesday is going well. Welcome to Hump Day as we continue to move along with the wonderfulness and exciting world that is Brew Sports. Uh, we welcome you inside the studio now. I am Baxter Colburn. No Tika Griesbach today, but the ever-exciting, ever-changing bracket master, Ryan Thies, is here with us today. Ryan, good afternoon to you, sir. How are we doing today? Oh, pretty good. Can't complain. Good. Right in the middle of conference tournament season. <sighs> Exciting time. Are you not entertained, Ryan? Yeah, I am. Last night was a little tough. but it was. Um, why, why was it's it gonna tough? Get more I know why it was tough, but I the currently, national audience might not necessarily know why it was tough. Yeah, I currently attend uh, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. True. They had a very improbable run to the Horizon League championship game. They're one win away from making the NCAA tournament and... They lost to Northern Kentucky. Congrats to the Norse. They're going to the Norse. tournament. Norse, Kentucky, yep. Norse. A lot of Norsemen there Northern. in Kentucky. I don't feel like the Vikings Not anymore. No. murked their way down there, <laughs> yeah. over, honestly. But uh, it's you never know, I guess. You, you never truly know with, with stuff like that. But um, we've got a good show for you today. We have a couple of great guests joining us. Uh, we'll be joined by Lee Nevis here in just a little while to talk about the She Believes Cup, the United States finishing in dead last, a very surprising thing. Uh, in dead last as they took on France, England, and Germany as well, too. So we'll talk about all that in just a little bit with Lee. Uh, We're also going to be joined by Alfredo Muente, one of our baseball correspondents as well on the program, to talk about the World Baseball Classic Team Israel. Hashtag Team Israel. Got my jersey in the mail. I'm excited. I'm a believer. What? I, did, they, Two and did, did they have a mascot? I mean, I guess national teams usually don't. Yeah, they have uh, some stuffed animal. They called stuffed uh, animal mensch on the bench. Mensch. I believe. What is what a mensch? Is. I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 it was a type of person. That's strange. That yeah. sounds like a Jewish thing, I guess. Like, oh, I'm a mensch. <laughs> Good. I don't know. I, I, I my, think it was. My it Jewish started with an terrible. M and rhymed with bench. That's all I remember off the top of my head. Good and for it's them. a giant stuffed animal. <laughs> Stuffed person, I stuffed guess. Stuffed person, yeah. stuffed thing, I guess. Well, uh, reminder for you folks as well, too, to interact with the broadcast. Comment below as we are live on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter, at BrewSportsNet, at Baxter Colburn, and at... Ryan Thies. Ryan Thies. Yeah, okay, I wasn't right sure there. if it was sometimes. It's his... I before E. Except after Thies. Yep. I don't know. No, that yeah. is I before E <laughs> for Ryan Thies, uh, T-H-I-E-S. Correct. Correct. Yep. Got it. Got Perfect. It. All right, Ryan, uh, time to roll into our What's on Tap segment. Uh, as people are chiming in as well, too, uh, don't forget to share today's episode as well with your friends, your family. Uh, hit share, just a quick little button there. You don't even have to throw any little words on it as well, too. Just, hey, hit share. Be like, yo, come check out what Baxter and Ryan are talking about here on Happy Hour. It's going to be a great time. First off, our What's on Tap segment, we need to honor a legend, Dirk Nowitzki. 30,000 points, 30,005 points officially. That's a lot. It's a lot. He is now sixth. All time on the NBA all time scoring standings, basically. He's only behind a small class of Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Carla Malone, and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. That's pretty darn good company to be in. Yeah, real good company. <laughs> Great big names there. Uh, the, the, my favorite part about last night seeing Dirk's 30,000th point was seeing his German shooting coach yes, in the crowd. I saw that. It was a Holger. Gentswinder, I probably, him. yeah, butchered that, but he got emotional watching him, his well, it's, mentee. It's, it's your prodigy, yeah. yeah. I mean, how many, he spent 19 years with Dirk, basically, and maybe even more than that since he's been with the Mavericks, but 19 years in the NBA, training him as a shooting coach, and then, obviously, you, you get, uh, you get such a momentous thing like that to happen, it, it, it really warms your heart, honestly, yeah. you know? And I, I would feel pride like that, too, if I had trained somebody for so long and then they <laughs> broke a, a huge NBA record like that. I mean, 10,000 points, eh, kind of a cool thing. 20,000, oh, okay, you're, you're getting up there. 25, okay, yeah, really cool. But when you eclipse that 30,000 mark and you join guys like Michael and Wilt mm-hmm. and Kareem, you must be doing something right with your career. I've heard a lot of people argue that Dirk is not a top 10 all-time great. Do you agree with that? I disagree. You uh, disagree? He, yeah, you think he's, he's in there. the top 10? Oh, for sure. Best to ever play the NBA game. Dirk Nowitzki. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Really? Yeah. Just Poor- the, the way he kind of brought the game overseas a little bit uh, yeah, in I Germany. Agree. I mean, I agree with you um, on that. He's a great ambassador for that. And he scored 30,000 points. He's doing something right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's really all the majority of the argument you need there. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's, but I, I've heard some people say, well, he's a top four power forward. I'm like, well, that's kind of a cop-out, I feel like. If you, you talk about what he's done for this game, Dirk Nowitzki, as you mentioned, 30,000 points. He's an NBA champion. He's an NBA MVP as well, too. I think a 13-time NBA All-Star on top of that. 
you got to put him in the conversation for at least top 10 or even top 13, maybe top 15. I mean, it's, you get, cause it's so hard because you got, you talk about Kareem and Carl and Moses and, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon and Oscar Roberts and guys that aren't even in the top 10 for all time, you know, scorers basically, but still did so much for their franchises and won numerous championships. And to think that you would put them in front of Dirk Nowitzki, I guess, is sometimes some people would call that questionable, I guess. It, it, there's an argument either side. There's a strong argument that Nowitzki gets into the top 10. Right. But then there's also the other side saying he's not as good. Let's pump the brakes here. Let's, it, it's a lot harder to say someone's into the top 10 Hmm. than that an already established top 10 to bring someone new in to say, oh, he's, he's better than the 10th I, yeah, guy. I can get on board with that, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just the principle of the top 10 argument, something yes. that's already established. Yeah, I, I yeah, agreed. I completely understand that one, all right. Uh, the other stuff of what's on tap for us today as we give you the quick headlines here. Um, have you seen what Nike's doing? Nike's got something really sharp that's, that's going on. Uh, Jamie and I talked about it this morning on The Morning Brew um, have you have you heard of what they're doing for for Muslim athletes? Yeah, it's the hijab, right? Yes, it's the the hijab pro, basically. So mm -hmm. uh, we we've got this uh, we've got an image of it here that we'll pull up in just a brief moment. But Nike basically designing the the hijab is something that Muslim females have to wear uh, to to you know as a as a respect as a culture thing, basically. And you'll you'll see it up here on the screen in, in, in just a brief moment as they see. There you go. So these athletes. Um, Nike, obviously, their technology, their 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 shirts, their pants, their everything that they wear, you know, very breathable, very easy to use. It's top notch for it athletics. It is, but you know, the hijabs that these Muslim uh, ladies have had to wear uh, sometimes are made of thick cloth, or mm -hmm. you know, I, I've always felt like it's almost like an oven, basically, from like the neck up. You see, the, like the long distance runners having to wear this. I can't even imagine playing a soccer game or basketball or volleyball or anything else that these ladies do, uh, which is already commendable as a whole. But then. Getting something now that's actually going to fit you better and actually be breathable and actually still help you represent your culture at the same time, I think it's a class act from Nike. I really no, do. It's phenomenal. I, can, I back this 100%. And it just makes sport that much more of a worldwide thing. It includes everyone. Nike is a huge worldwide brand, um, top-of-the-line stuff. If they get exposure to this part of the country or even all across the world – it's going to help not only Nike's image, but the image of sport and humanity as a whole. I completely agree with you on that one. All right, last thing. You want to make fun of Tim Tebow, so I'm going to give you that opportunity, Ryan. What is going on with Big Timmy T? Well, he finally started an MLB-level oh, game. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good for you, Tim. La last year, he was in the minor league system for the Mets, signed yep. that free agent contract in the middle of the year. Didn't work out as well as I think. Yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, a couple of dingers. But today was the day he got on the MLB roster. Every little kid's dream, <laughs> yeah. basically. Yeah. And um, he he was the designated hitter. Batting fourth. Yep. Tim Tebow. And he went 0 for 3. Two backwards Ks. Came up with the bases loaded, though. Hey, the, the, situation. the situation every kid dreams of. No outs. His team's down by one. It's the fourth inning. It wasn't a well, big clutch situation. Ninth, but still. And he grounds into a 4-6-3 double play. <sighs> Doesn't get the RBI, even though he tied the game, because he grounded into the double play. And by yes. baseball rules, you don't get the RBI. No. He did make it on base, though. He did. He got hit by a pitch. <laughs> Yep. I love it. <laughs> Getting hit by a pitch. Hey, Tim Tebow will take anything he can to get on base, it's, I guess. And it's that, just a start, though. Well, well we're going to see him again on Friday. I mean, today was the first test. I mean, they played the Boston Red Sox today, for gosh sakes. How yeah. good can Face anybody do? Face the reigning do? Cy Young award winner <laughs> for his first at-bat. His first at-bat. I mean, if there's anything more intimidating, it's facing a Cy mm -hmm. Young award winner to be like, all right, well. Left, lefty on lefty game matchup, on, too. Basically. It just, the odds were against him for once in his life. For once, in his yeah. Life. There was no said divine <laughs> intervention, unfortunately, for this one. Uh, well, that concludes, I think, our What's on Tap segment. Um, any thoughts about anything else we talked about there, Dirk, uh, Nike, Tim Tebow? Any closing remarks you want to in there really quick? I, I think we're good. Okay. All, out there, yeah. all right, let's move along with the program. Uh, we are going to bring in our first correspondent on the program today. So the She Believes Cup just wrapped up uh, last night. France was crowned the victor. Uh, with seven total points of France, Germany, England, and the United States all playing here in the beautiful U.S. of A. 
Uh, the United States did not perform as well as they were hoping to, and a gal that was at the forefront of many of the action uh, was Lee Nevis, and she is a soccer correspondent for us here on Brew Sports, and she joins us now on Brew Sports. Lee, good afternoon. Welcome to Brew Sports. How are we doing today? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. We're excited to have you on the program, Lee. So talk to me about this result. Are you as disappointed as the rest of U.S. soccer fans are this morning, or this, this day as a whole? You know, it's kind of mixed emotions because, yes, of course, I'm disappointed. I want the U.S. to perform the best that they possibly can in every tournament. But also the other side of it is we're not really preparing for anything right now except for the 2019 World Cup while these three other teams are preparing for the Euros, which is a huge tournament for them, obviously. So, yes, I'm disappointed. I think last night was sort of a disaster, but I don't think that it is – a complete disaster for the future of the U.S. national team. What were some of the matchups that you were watching in this? I know the goalkeeper battle was a big thing. Uh, obviously, oh. defense is still getting shorn up. The alley long experiment at center back. What were some of the big things that you personally were, were keeping a hard eye on to see what Jill Ellis would do with a lot of these ladies? Um, well, I think obviously number one had to have been alley long at center back. She had gotten a lot of criticism for um, – well, she hadn't, but Jill Ellis had gotten a lot of criticism for putting her at center back. Um, I felt that I was trying so hard. I have been such a huge Ali Long supporter at center back. I've wanted her to do so great. And I think that last night... You're a pro Ali Long center back supporter? Uh, until last night, I like <laughs> ate my words so hard. <laughs> and, you know, I think that it's not... It's not that she's bad in any way. It's just, my God, France is so fast. I mean, France was running us up and down the field. They're insanely, insanely quick. And I think that last night I really maybe realized why everyone was making fun of me for the past um, couple months of being such a big Ali Long supporter. So, I mean, I, I, we, I've had Allie Long on other shows that I've done. I have, Allie Long's been on two up front that we do here on Brew Sports as well, too. And mm -hmm. I asked her about the center back conundrum. I said, okay, are you actually a center back or are you a, a, a true midfielder? Because you're confusing a lot of us. And she was like, I would prefer to play midfield, but she was that team spirited gal. She's like, like, I'll play wherever I need to. She's like, if Jill asked me to play a defense, if Mark Parsons asked me to play a defense, I'm going to play there, of course, because I want my team to win, but I feel like after her performance last night, even Becky Sauerbrunn last night, I might be putting in a change of position address at this point point. be like, guys, maybe I'll play goalie, maybe I'll play something else. And I feel like it's such a common misconception. Just because you're tall and strong doesn't mean you should be playing center back. That, that, you don't have to do that, I feel like. Oh, 100%. I, I really feel like that was definitely very apparent last night. So, yeah. Now, Rose Lavelle, she is a former Wisconsin Badger. We're based out of Milwaukee here. Um, just to the viewers, how, how did she do uh, in this tournament? You know, overall, I think that Rose had an amazing, amazing first cap. Um, her last game versus England was insane. I mean, she was absolutely... Agreed. She looked very confident with the ball, honestly. Oh, yeah. And I mean, she didn't even just do good for a first cap. Like, she did good for her just being in the game, period, which I thought was amazing. Um, last night, she made a few mistakes, but everyone on the team made so many mistakes last night. I thought that she was kind of a bright spot in the first half when she was playing. So overall, I'm, I'm very, very happy that Rose is doing wonderful right now with the team. What would be one thing that if you were Jill Ellis that you would want to change off of how this roster went? I mean, I, I, some people were a little upset about the, the youth movement. Some people were upset there was no Megan Rapinoe or no Hope Solo. Like you said yourself, the tournament didn't really matter. It did, but mm -hmm. it didn't. So would you have changed anything about the players that Jill Ellis called in, or were you satisfied with the, with the 23 players that were there? You know, I, I was one of the people that was a little upset that Megan Rapinoe was left off this roster. But that's just me kind of being biased. I don't think that wingers are something that we really have an issue with on the team right now. We have so many good ones. The issue with the roster right now is that we don't have a real, like, true defensive midfielder. Because we had Ali Long as that, and now she's our center back. Um, I would have liked to see a few more defensive midfielders get called up. Maybe Di Bernardo from the Red Stars. 
um, maybe Danny Calaprico. I think that I would have been a lot happier if those two ladies would have got a call up, but I think a lot of the issues right now aren't really who we're calling up. It's where we're placing them on the field. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that one for sure, honestly. Now, yeah. Lee, what are your thoughts on the U.S. international players, such as Alex Morgan, Carly Lloyd, uh, Crystal Dunn? How do you think they did overall? You know, Alex Morgan and Carly Lloyd did not really perform how I was expecting them to perform. Yes. But also, they have been overseas. I know time change can be awful. I, that shouldn't be an excuse, but it might be an excuse. Um Crystal Dunn wasn't her best in the first two games, but last night when she was subbed in the second half, I think that she really, really showed the only hope that the U.S. had last night was when Crystal Dunn came in. And I would have loved to have seen that Crystal Dunn throughout the entire tournament. Yeah, and so. I, I would I would agree with you on that one too. Barry mm -hmm. says he misses watching Hope Solo here on Facebook with us. I I don't know if I agree <laughs> with that honestly. I think Hope Solo is kind of I think we're kind of done and dusted with the whole Hope Solo thing honestly, and I think we just need to kind of move on from her. I mean, I'm not sold on Alyssa Harris or, or, or um, Alyssa Nair or Ashlyn Harris at this point honestly, but mm -hmm. I don't think Hope Solo d needs to be back on the national team anymore. I don't think that she needs to be on the team anymore as well but i do miss her and i think that her you know on-field presence is something that the team is really missing right now i think that you know she was like the one you know making all the calls like making you know game time changes like telling the de like defense where to go and i think that that is what we are really missing right now also so i do miss hope solo too i love her so much but i think that you know, we will survive without her. I think Alyssa Nair and Ashley Harris are both going to be great. They just have to have a few mistakes in order to fix them. So Fair enough. <laughs> My last question for you, Lee, before we let you run is, or we're still with Hope Solo, she doesn't have a team to play for yet. Are we going to see her in NWSL this upcoming season? Is some team going to, to sign her? But at the same time, not a lot of teams need a goalkeeper, actually. That's one position that the NWSL has done a great job of kind of stocking up on as well. Yeah. Well, I think it's been pretty apparent with the new signings that Laura Harvey has brought into Seattle because um, she just signed Madeline Schiffel. Um, so I think that they have two goalkeepers right now. They also have, I believe they still have Hope Solo's rights. Um, so I personally don't think that she's going to be playing in the NWSL this season. I would be shocked if she was. I think Seattle's probably just going to stick to um, Haley Kottmeyer and Madeline Schiffel. But I think I really think that we're going to see Hope Solo play um, overseas sometime in the next year or so. That's my prediction. Obviously, I don't know anything. I wish I had inside information <laughs> right now on that. But I would not be surprised if she went and played in, you know, Sweden or France or a place like that. All right. Good stuff, Lee. Where can people find your writing and find you on social media as well to keep up with the latest soccer news as you uh, hear about it and release it to the world? You can find me on Twitter at Lee Nevis, L-E-I-G-H-N-I-E-V-E-S, and you can find all of my writings at BacklineSoccer.com. You're the best, Lee. Let's do it again soon, all right? Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. There goes Lee Nevis uh, here on Happy Hour. Some very good insight from Lee. Uh, we're going to jump from one correspondent to another, Ryan. We are going to move uh, right to away. the world of baseball now and talk about the world baseball classic. Alfredo Muente, one of our baseball correspondents, is live on the line with us now. Alfredo, good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good afternoon to you guys. Oh, good to hear you. Good to, uh, good to have you back on the program today, Alfredo. The World Baseball Classic is in full swing, pardon the pun. Uh, your overall <laughs> thoughts about the tournament so far? What about Team Israel there just taking it to the rest of the world? Uh, yes, indeed. I love what they're doing. Uh, this is an underdog team, of course, uh, in Pool A. They have already qualified to the next round, which will be held in Tokyo, along with Team Netherlands, who is one of my dark horses, just because they have such a fantastic infield. Both of those teams are 2-0 and so far in the tournament. And they are playing against inferior talent right now in Korea and Chinese Taipei. So Israel and Netherlands, they will play tonight to decide who will be the number one seed in Pool A. And then, of course, in Pool B right now, you have Japan as the host in that. They are 2 and They have already advanced, and I believe that they will be moving on along with Cuba, who is another dark horse, and of course you think of Cuba, you think of all the big names that have come into the major yes. leagues recently, but they do not have big sluggers on that team. They did not send their major leaguers, and right now uh, their biggest hitter right now is Alfredo Despagne, and they've got uh, Yohannes Cespedes, his younger brother, 
who is also on the team, 19-year-old, uh, who is uh, one of the top hitters on that ball club right now. So they should advance along with Japan in Pool B. Now, you talk about Cuba and how they didn't get all of the Major League talent as they could have. Another team, uh, pretty close to home here, USA, kind of had the same issue. There wasn't as many as, as the big names going to play for USA. They still got um, decent names, such as Paul Goldschmidt and company. But what do you make of the MLB guys kind of snubbing the World Baseball Classic this year? Well, there are a bunch of them, and uh, some of them uh, wanted to concentrate more on spring training. And that, well, that's the reason why Mike Trout and Clayton Kershaw and Madison Bumgarner, names like that, are not in the tournament. But you still have some big names. And what I said to Baxter last week and when we talked on the Morning Brew was that the United States has right now the best team that they have fielded in this uh, tournament going over the last 11 years. They will start Chris Archer in their first game tomorrow night at Marlins Park. He will be the starter against Columbia. You also have Danny Duffy going in this tournament, the left hitter from the Royals, and then against Team Canada uh, as well. You're going to see Marcus Stroman go against the Dominican Republic tomorrow night. So I think they are stacked. Of course, they bring in very good talent. Uh, they could actually have two great teams, really, if they wanted to. Jim Leland's brought together a great bunch of guys. Uh, but you have very, very good depth. You have Jonathan Lucroy and Buster Posey at catcher, both big names, of course. And in the infield, you mentioned Paul Goldschmidt, but don't forget about Nolan Arenado. Uh, he is great down to third base, great defender and a great hitter with Colorado. Alex Bregman is there to back him up. You've got Brandon Crawford at shortstop, Hosmer, Kinsler, Murphy. I mean, the names go on and on for Team USA. So watch for this team to do well. They are 10-10. and 10 in the 20 games that they have played at the World Baseball Classic over the last three of them. Really? So watch for this team. Yes, they are. They yeah. are a 500 team, so uh -huh. they have not done well, really, to say mm -hmm. much. And uh, they, they, they will uh, have a better showing this time around. Expect them and the Dominican Republic to advance out of Pool C. Uh, correct, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Ryan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Giancarlo Stanton's on this roster, too, for the United States. Is that right? Did I, did I see that somewhere in the headlines? That is correct. So, yes, and he will be playing in front of his uh, home fans at the Marlins Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like if you've got a bat like John Carlos Stanton chilling on your roster, I feel like no matter how good the rest of the supporting cast, and obviously the Marlins are a true example of that, but uh, you at least have a semi-fighting chance, honestly, when a guy like John Carlo is uh, stepping up to the plate for you at least a couple times a game. Uh, that's right. He and his teammate Christian Yelich are going to be in that same outfield, too, along with Andrew McCutcheon, a former MVP, and Adam Jones, really so. Uh, you, you don't have a lack of big names on this team, that's for sure. And so Jim Leland's got a, a great problem of who to start. You know, do you go with Kinsler or Murphy at, uh, you know, at second base? Do you go with Luke Roy or Posey behind the plate? So a lot of big names. And let's not forget about the pitchers, too, which I mentioned. And they do have some great relievers as well that can come in in good situations. Michael Gibbons of the Orioles, Luke Gregerson of the Pines. You have a Tyler Clifford as well. So a lot of big names on Team USA. So I'm very excited to see them kick up their tournament tomorrow night. Yeah, let's talk about Pool D now, as they could be kind of future opponents of USA in the next round. Three big teams there, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and the absolutely stacked Venezuela lineup. Uh, do you think, who, who's got, got the real threat of kind of dethroning Venezuela in that Pool D? Uh, Puerto Rico is, is a team that I've mentioned, and I think Pool D is the strongest of all the pools. Uh, Mexico is a team that I think is a dark horse that could also advance, but they've got more pitching than anything. Adrian Gonzalez is really the only big name offensively that Mexico has, but they will be playing in front of their home crowd down in Jalisco, Mexico. So that is always a big thing for them. And Puerto Rico has a fantastic infield. I mean, when you've got Carlos Correa in that team, as well as Francisco Lindor, who do you start at shortstop? I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a great problem that Puerto Rico's got. But no, Venezuela, as you say, they are the cream of the crop in that pool D. Miguel Cabrera, Jose Altuve, Carlos Gonzalez. I mean, they have a fantastic team. And, I mean, they're great one through nine. Venezuela's another team, just like the Dominican and the USA, that could field two good teams in this tournament. You, you look at, I have to ask just because I, I have Italian roots. Team Italy just looks like they're just having an absolute ball with everything they're doing. I and mean, they haven't even played a single game yet. But um, did the Italians, as a, as a fellow Italian, that, you know, Italians in baseball doesn't really go hand in hand, if anybody has just been wondering over the last couple of decades. But uh, does Team Italy have any, any chance in this at all, as a, as a fellow Italian, just, you know, hoping for my, <laughs> my fellow countrymen? <laughs> Well, I have Italian ancestry as well back there. Hey, yeah, there we go. Sadly to say, I, I, I don't no. think that Team Italy <laughs> really has much of a chance because they're no. in that uh, so-called group of death. And, yeah. and uh, you know you know what I mean by that. 
But, uh, they, yeah, they don't have a lot of big names. I mean, they do have major leaguers on that roster. Chris Colabello is a guy who's uh, done well in his career. Daniel Descalso is in there as well. Gavin Cicchini is an up-and-comer. So they've got some names on this team. I just don't think with Puerto Rico, Venezuela, and Mexico in there that they can make much of a run. Now, Dominican Republic, they've done – very, they've had very good success in this World Baseball Classic, especially the last one. Um, how do you analyze them, this 2017 edition? Well, they are the defending champions, and they went, they ran the table in 2011. They went 8-0. and But keep in mind that this is a team that was upset eight years ago. Twice they lost the Netherlands in the first round, and uh, I don't expect that to happen. I, I feel that the Dominican Republic has a great chance of getting into the final. I think they will play USA in the final as well. They will meet again when they play in Los Angeles in late March, and uh, they have a great cast of names as well. One guy who was not going to be there is Hanley Ramirez because Ooh. of an injury, yeah. but expect Adrian Beltre. He said he will play of course, you have Robinson Cano, Manny Machado right there in the infield as well. And big names. Jose Bautista was uh, sort of an interesting seem fair, name. Honestly. Was... <laughs> no, it, it does not seem fair. This, uh, this team just has uh, not just great MLB names, but superstar talent on this team. I mean, when you can put an outfield with Bautista, Marte, Polanco, and even Nelson Cruz thrown in there as well. And they've got great pitching also. Don't forget about them. So uh, they are a complete team. Uh, I looked for Puerto Rico. Uh, excuse me, I look for the Dominican Republic to get back to the championship and go in there against the United States and, and fight it off there for the championship. Yeah, you've really sold a lot of these teams. It seems like multiple teams could really compete to win this World Baseball Classic. But who was your personal pick? Well, I tell you, I've been picking the United States since the very beginning. I, I think that they have their best team. I think that they have way too much talent and they have way too much pressure on their back just because of the fact that they have struggled in the past. So uh, a watch for Team USA to do well in front of their home crowd. Watch for, like I said, the Dominican to be the team that they play against. But uh, Netherlands is a dark horse as well coming in there and giving some fight in, in the semifinal round. And also Puerto Rico and potentially even Venezuela, like we mentioned earlier. So that fivesome right there is, are the five teams that I think will have the most success in this tournament. And you've already seen teams like Israel and the Netherlands have some uh, success early on uh, so watch for those five right there as the weeks come and you're down too uh you're down in the miami too aren't you uh, alfredo if i remember correctly are you trying to catch some pool b action did i did you tell me that last week i feel like uh, that is correct i will be actually i believe you tomorrow morning uh i'm in the tampa area right now but i will be traveling down there and, and be there in time for the first game but i'm looking forward to it getting a chance i had a chance to watch uh, Team USA play four years ago uh, at Marlins Park as well, and this tournament has grown exponentially. Uh, the crowds are going to be a sellout form uh, this weekend, as I've heard already, and so looking for great atmosphere down in Miami as uh, the fans congregate there along with Pool C. Good stuff, Alfredo. Where can people follow you on social media to uh, keep up with all the latest baseball news coming from yourself, sir? Well, I, I can be found on Twitter at Alfredo underscore Muente. And also you can read my baseball blogs on blogger.com at Alfredo Muente baseball.blogspot.com. I know, I know it's a mouthful, but uh, you, you can look it up on Blogger and find me there. Perfect, Alfredo. Always a pleasure, sir. We'll talk to you again soon, all right? All right, gentlemen. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Same to you as well, too. There goes Alfredo Muente talking to us here on Happy Hour. Reminder for you folks as well, too, if you are watching the broadcast, don't forget to share it with your friends. Uh, hit that little share button right there. Drop your comments below. We've already talked about the She Believes Cup. We just talked about the World Baseball Classic as well, too, thanks to Lee, Neve, uh, to, to Lee Neves and also Alfredo Muente as well, too, as we just heard from both of them. Uh, great insight, I feel like, Ryan, from, uh, from two uh, experts in their respective fields, honestly. Yeah, phenomenal. Uh, information coming from them. Alfredo knew just about every roster of the world. I can't baseball believe player. it. I feel like I know a lot of, of soccer and a lot of football, but baseball has always eluded me. He's just mm -hmm. going boom, 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 boom all over the place. So very impressed with his Italian roster knowledge. Yeah, I know. I was just names. like, hey, <laughs> what do you, you know? Like that makes me happy as a fellow Italian. I'm just like, way to go there, buddy. All right, uh, we need to talk about NFL free agency because that's all anybody and everybody's talking about right now. And people are probably sitting here going, why are you taking so long to talk about the free agents? <laughs> well, nobody cares about Tyrod Taylor, okay? I'm sorry. I'm going to put that out there. <laughs> if you haven't heard Tyrod Taylor restructuring his contract, going back to the Bills. Sorry, Tanner, if yeah, you're you watching. You don't want to tell Tanner that. You'll get over it. We'll <laughs> talk about it tomorrow on halftime. But, uh, I mean, are you, are you, we'll start with Tyrod. Are you surprised with the Tyrod restructuring deal basically to keep no, him in buffalo no he's a good fit there uh he's it's if it ain't broke don't fix it it's kind of uh, a mantra i've been a part of 
Um, they're fixing a little bit, but not too big of a change there. <laughs> he's staying there in Buffalo. He's probably comfortable there. Uh, it's true. Likes the coaches, likes the area, and he's going to stay. Yeah, and I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, you bring a quarterback, and sometimes it really is more of a growing pain you know, sort of a thing. Tyrod Taylor, he's only been in Buffalo for a handful of seasons, so giving him an opportunity to restructure his deal – giving him that ability to, to go farther and to showcase that he can be a consistent, even a good quarterback. Not a great quarterback, but a good, consistent quarterback in the National Football League, I think, is a big deal for Buffalo to, to maintain some consistency because how many times, Ryan, have we seen Buffalo and a lot of teams just cycle through quarterbacks like they're mm-hmm. candy? You know, it's really what it is. It's like, oh, this one's good. All right, now I'm done with that. Now I'm yeah. going to take a little bit of this one and get rid of this one now. So. You'd like to think that Buffalo is going to find a little bit of success, but they're already in a division that Miami continues to get bigger and better every year. New England, until Tom Brady and Bill Belichick retire, are going to always win that division. Houston has a lot of things they need to figure out, so I, I don't see them pushing. And Houston's not even in that division now that I'm talking about it. The Jets, they're in the that's conference. They're in the conference. Same conference, yeah, but the Jets, though. I mean, the Jets are so far removed, yeah. though, at this point with everybody <laughs> yeah. that they've released. Um, that helps us transition, though, if you heard that the Jets – uh, a couple of days ago, released Brandon Marshall. He uh, decided to go to a new team, was very excited, packed his bags, and ended up staying <laughs> in the same stadium. Yep. He signed with the Giants today, Don't if have you haven't heard. Far. Brandon Marshall to the Giants, a two-year, $12 million deal is going to be uh, the, the way it all is going to fall out now. Does he find consistency? Does he find that elusive Super Bowl now? He finds himself with Eli Manning. He finds himself... Uh, with Eli Apple, I guess, on the defensive side. If you really want to look into the, the young defensive players, you've got uh, you know Odell Beckham Jr. But a lack of a run game, a lack of a consistent defense, I, still, I feel like he made a mistake, honestly. Uh, I don't think he made a big mistake, but he does improve his Super Bowl chances. I know yes. that's easy to say coming Virtually from the Virtually anything Jets. is better than the Jets. <laughs> yeah, but um, the, the Giants made a little bit of a, a playoff push. They yes. got eliminated by your Packers. Um, but they are on the up and coming. I th- they got solid quarterback, which, as you just mentioned, how long is does a big Eli thing. have left? Though that's a, that's another big thing. I mean, not too much longer, but there's still some good pieces in New York. Yes, um, kind of more more of a hidden team. People overlook the Giants because oh, they think Eli Manning, but he, he can win playoff games. He's proven that he can win the playoff yeah, game, and, and I, that's what Brandon Marshall And wants. I have nothing against Eli Manning. I think he's a Hall of Fame quarterback, of course. I mean, anytime you can beat the Patriots in two Super Bowls, he's got two rings. I mean, Eli is a Hall of Fame quarterback through and through at the end of the day, but when you talk about being able to win right now, I, I, I struggle to say that I could put my faith in Eli Manning if I needed to win a Super Bowl tomorrow, basically. I, I would almost rather choose even a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers, who I think would do much better given the circumstances and the, and the players around them. I, that's a fair argument to say too, but it just fit better in New York. And, and that's and that's the thing. I mean, there's, you there's know, a lot of aspects that we maybe not see. It's, yes. it's it's a very private thing that they have as far as the contract negotiations go. All right, uh, another big wide receiver move today: Pierre Garcon mm-hmm. uh, securing a. Uh, Pretty much an f- official move. Nothing is official until the trade uh, until the free agent market officially opens yeah. tomorrow at four Eastern. So even though we're hearing all these news and people are like, I thought free agent opened on the ninth, it does. But today's the legal tampering day, so you can actually like establish deals and basically hand the person the contract. They just can't go. There's my name. Like they nothing mm-hmm. officially can be processed yet until tomorrow at four Eastern. But so obviously all these deals are going to officially get processed at that time. Um, Pierre Garcon to the Forty ers I've heard it was a year for $16 million. Tell me I'm wrong about that. I think that's what it is. You know more than I do. I'm so. pretty sure that's what it is. I, I, I could be wrong about that, and please correct me in the comments if I'm not if I'm going horribly astray with this. But Pierre Garçon of the 49ers for somewhere right around that high to mid-level teens uh, pay for, I believe, only a year. Seems a bit ridiculous, especially since the yeah. 49ers today went on the record to say, uh, yeah, we're going to stick with Brian Hoyer. They signed Brian Hoyer to a multi-year contract Perfect. today. So if it's not broke, right. <laughs> don't fix it. Or maybe you should fix it because it is broke, San Francisco. Yeah, you give him another option. You give him another target. So Brian Hoyer, I guess, has an opportunity to, to rally, especially now with Colin Kaepernick gone, of course, as well, too. We still don't know where he's going to end up. That'll be a hot name that people will be tracking left and right, of course, as well. But I, I don't know. San Francisco still is such a shell of what it used to be. The defense mm-hmm. just basically all retired. 
You know, like that was the big thing. It's like, oh, Chris Borland retired. Oh, Patrick Willis retired. Everybody's retiring. Like the whole defense just packed up after the Super Bowl and was like, we're never going to be good again, guys. Thanks again. It's been well, it's been real. I'm out, basically. I I feel like if you're San Francisco and you go into this upcoming season, Brian Hoyer's your starting quarterback. Pierre Garçon, you've got. That um, just hurts to hear. Brian Hoyer is your starting quarterback. <sighs> Brian Hoyer or Mike Glennon? <laughs> Who would you rather? If you had, Hoyer, probably. You would rather Honestly, have Brian yeah. Hoyer? Even the Glennon is such a hot name right now for some reason. $15 million no a year is what he's trying to command, <laughs> which I think is is Bolshevik, personally. Uh, but I think it, it's a little ridiculous. If you're an NFL starting quarterback right now, yes. you are rooting for Mike Glennon to get the biggest deal that he can yes. so that you can restructure your contract. So then you can walk into <laughs> yeah, your, so you, your, the GM's Mike office making and be this. like, Why don't I make <laughs> <one>? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Aaron on Facebook here does confirm it. He says the San Francisco 49ers are expected to pay Garcon a deal that will pay him $16 million in 2017. $16 million for an underperforming wide receiver that the Redskins couldn't even make a lot of anything off of. And now they're going to throw $16 million at him for one single year. And maybe this is just me. Maybe this is my layman's feelings. But $16 million for a year's worth of work for a player that has never consistently shown himself in the National Football League seems ludicrous to me personally mm-hmm. am i wrong about that nope okay good i'm glad i'm glad we're all in accordance to this maybe i'm wrong in the comment sections comment below let us know if you think i'm just absolutely off my rocker but i'd like to think that 16 million for pierre garçon pierre garçon this isn't <laughs> alshon jeffrey <laughs> this isn't an elite wide receiver this is pierre garçon who most people draft fourth or fifth on their wide receiver depth chart for fantasy football if that or take him in the first round because you think Kirk cousins is an elite quarterback <laughs> We'll have to have a conversation later if you think that's true. Oh, the good old elite conversation. I hate that. It's so annoying. And we've had other people on past shows I as well that just like, how does it elite? What I makes just see elite? it as satirical now. I don't, I don't buy it. If, when you say elite, it just it goes out the window. I, I just agree. think of it as a joke. Um, one of the things that has just developed here in the last about hour is that um, Martellius Bennett is likely leaving. As many folks know, uh, he was going to hit the free agent market. He only played a one-year deal for the Patriots. Now he's going to likely hit the open market. So uh, the Colts decided to go and do something about that. Uh, they are going to be bringing in um, uh, his first name escapes me now, Allen. I can't think of his name now. Uh, the One of the Colts tight ends, Dwayne Allen, that's his name. There mm-hmm. we go. Couldn't, there you go. Couldn't, couldn't fathom it. I think he was a Titans wide, or tight end at one point as well too. But Dwayne Allen finding himself being traded for by the Patriots to come in to make that roster even more deadly. Uh, a younger tight end, of course, who still has a lot of life left in him. So he's going from an Andrew Luck inconsistent, ridiculous neck beard to now a slick-looking Tom Brady that gives away food boxes uh, to his food subscription service. Did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? T- about his food? The, his little the food Tom box? Tom Brady nuts purple, thing? No, like the purple carrot food subscription service that you can oh. get. $78 a week for six meals of all greens, basically. No meats. It's like the Tom Brady diet, basically. Sounds horrible. To pay I, that much as, money If you can see my meat. figure, I am clearly on the Tom Brady diet because I, I, I don't have a lot of extra girth to me, basically. But I, I think it's a little funny, honestly, that people are jumping on that. $78, though, for six meals of non-meat. It's sold out, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's called Purple quickly. Carrot, too. Yeah. That's the most weird name. Carrots aren't supposed to be purple. Nope. If, you, if I saw a purple carrot, my first thought would be like, that's a good idea. I'm going to eat that. No, Not that the carrots that they <laughs> use in this are purple, obviously. It's a marketing thing to help you remember it because, of course, we're talking about it, and that's how I remember it. I'm like, oh, purple carrot. Wow, that's weird. I can remember that. You know, How other weird things do you remember based off of the strange names? I mean, Bruce Bortz. Oh, wow, Bruce Bortz. That makes total sense. Sounds yeah. like a cool thing. <laughs> Maybe I should go watch and subscribe. There's a great idea. Boop. Love it. So That's a hint. That's, that's a, a hint. big hint, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to... You know, just put that, just, you know, go do that kind of a thing. Setting it down there, basically. I don't have a, a hint to give you, but if that's my metaphorical hint. All right, uh, Tony Romo, people like to talk about Big Tony. I don't, but people like to talk about Big Tony. He's now considered the number one free agent available on the market. People are saying, will he go to Denver? Will he go to Houston? If you're Brock Osweiler, you, you don't obviously want him to come to Houston because you'd like an opportunity to prove that you're worth the $17 million a year that people are blasting the Texans for giving him after he, what, started three games, four games for the for the Broncos, and the Texans it, it were like, we love you! It wasn't good. It was not good. It was a really bad experiment last year. So Tony Romo to the Texans, Tony Romo to the Broncos. Tony Romo to the Broncos makes far more sense in my mind if he's looking to try to win a championship before he hangs up his, his you know, 
brittle body, honestly. I mean, I, I worry about Tony Romo, though, because I feel like he still doesn't have a physical presence that is going to be sustainable. I, I, I just I feel like he's going to take a hit preseason game number one. He's going to be done for the year, and all this hup and hoopla is going to just be tossed out the window, and then they're just going to go back to Trevor Simeon or Paxton Lynch and you know, win, win six games. Sustainability goes down real quick as you get older. Yes. And that's what Tony Romo is getting older, and his sustainability is getting a lot smaller. And we saw that last season. It's, yeah, it's, it's a classic case of the name being worth more than the actual market value. I mean, if, you, if you're buying stock, I'm not a big stock buy, but if you hear that Apple is selling stock, even though maybe Apple has been doing awful the last five or six years, um, the products are bad, everybody, whatever, people are, but it's the name. It's, oh, it's the Apple. It's, oh, it's Tony Romo, Tony Romo. Like, we know he went to Dallas. He must be good, but he gets hurt all the time. But he's a, he's a playoff caliber quarterback. Like, are teams this desperate? Are people that, is Denver or Houston yeah. that desperate? Mike a, Glennon is a hot commodity, so I think, yeah, Tony Romo. I would almost fair. rather go it alone with Trevor Simeon, honestly, if I'm Denver. Yeah. I don't think he was terrible mm-hmm. last year. I think you no, gave him a year to all. learn the offense. Now you bring him back at another capacity and say, all right, Trevor, you, what'd you learn? Make it, mm-hmm. make it be better this year. Maybe you still sign a lower-level free agent, but you don't put your chips in the basket for Tony Romo at this point. Denver is looking to continue to compete, and their defense is going to bail them out of a lot of games. I, I, I totally get that. I think Tony Romo had a very good role with Dallas this past year. Yes. Kind of as, or if you sign Tony Romo, sign him to a smaller deal. Yeah, he was kind of the mentor, the, the backup mentor, because he has experience, but he just doesn't quite have that Super Bowl success yet. Yes. But he can still lead a young guy, as we just saw Dak Prescott. He led him to very good into the playoffs. It was a close game. Uh, it was a winnable game by mm-hmm. the Cowboys. Um, they didn't, however. But still, that's what Tony Romo brings. And yeah, you're, <laughs> you're giving that look. <laughs> what look? <laughs> the overhype of a one seed in the playoffs? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. When you have Aaron Rodgers on your team, anything's possible. Uh, Greg on Facebook says um, he sure thinks Eli Manning. Uh, he, he thinks that Eli Manning could win a Super Bowl now. I uh, I think so, honestly. Yeah, uh, he said. Does any, I mean, did anybody expect Seattle or Denver last year to to perform the way they did? I mean, did anybody expect the Dallas to go as far as they did last year? I, I would agree with you. I mean, going into the season, I think everybody thought Seattle and Denver were going to be you know deep playoff push teams, and Dallas to be that mid level team again. Especially once Romo got hurt, everybody was like, well, shoot. Dak Prescott's our quarterback. How good are we going to be? Might as well start saddling up for the draft next year and get a top five pick at this point. But obviously Dak and Zeke had other ideas, and Dallas did what they did. Now, will they repeat going this year? That's the question. I mean, you well, as we get close to the NFL season and after free agency and the draft and all that fun stuff is done, of course, we're going to dive a lot more into it on Brew Sports for you know predictions and all that fun stuff. But it's so hard to really label teams now as being like, this is a Super Bowl contender team. Nobody fully knows. I mean, Atlanta didn't lose a lot of people, so maybe Atlanta's going to make a deep push. But how often do you see teams that don't lose a lot of guys in the offseason not even remotely match what they've been able to do? You know, Seattle was a Super Bowl team two years ago. They didn't really lose anybody in the offseason last year and didn't even make the playoffs. Or they did make the playoffs, but they got steamrolled by the Falcons because they had injuries. It happens. It happens. You know, so... Don't don't start thinking the Browns are going to win the Super Bowl next year or the Titans, but you know, definitely. I don't think anyone thought the Browns were going to win the Super Bowl. No, no, I, they <laughs> you should. If, they if you a, did, you, you have bigger they have problems. They have over a hundred million dollars worth of free cap space right now. I don't. If they don't go out and start signing people left and right, I think Cleveland could certainly be a more hot commodity next I mean, year. They'll sign people just. Well, they'd be good people. It's it's the right people. Exactly. That's the question. You're absolutely right about that. Uh, Tracer on Facebook says, love listening to you guys. Appreciate it, Tracer. Uh, He says, especially a former Coyote, keep up the good work, Ryan. There you go, Tracer. Go Yotes. Me and Tracer go way back. Tracer hitting you out. Uh, Aaron says that his wife feeds him purple carrots. They are real. Uh, she says they are good for you as well, too. I, I would like to debate I'm sure there's a lot said of things. purple carrots. There's a lot of things good for us. But Doesn't your parents eh. say, like, what is it? Uh, not asparagus. What's the other, like? Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Yeah. That's what it is. No, anything from Brussels can't be that good, honestly. No, Brussels sprouts <laughs> are strange. Even steamed, I think, are a little strange, mm-hmm. personally. 
Uh, all right, Ryan, as we wrap things up, um, what do you got coming up tonight on, on College Road Trip with you and Barry Nelson? I know you've got some exciting stuff coming yeah. up here in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. Bracketology. It's getting of into course. conference tournament time. What else? Uh, some of we're, we're talking mostly mid-majors, and a lot of the top seeds in the mid-major conferences aren't really panning out to what they're supposed to do. True. And sometimes that can take away spots from the Power 5 schools that are on the bubble. Um, less spots there are, less bubble teams get in. That's just simple math. We'll discuss that, uh, who we think might go in, who's going to be out, talk about uh, the smaller schools that maybe a lot of shows overlook. We'll be talking Missouri Valley Conference, Ooh, Wichita State. Okay. Unfortunately, we'll be talking Horizon League. We'll be talking, <laughs> yep, ouch, UWM. Uh, we'll t- talk the MAC. The Not Mac. that MAC. M-A-A-C, the Metro Ew. Atlantic Athletic Conference. And Iona, I think, is the one who won that one. I think so. Yep. The no Gales, idea. by the way. Of course. Yep. Never doubted you. <laughs> the Gales. Ryan knows every Division I uh, mascot. All 351. We'll also be talking some college hockey, women's hockey more specifically. College hockey, okay. Uh, Wisconsin Badgers, they're number one. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Wisconsin Badgers around here, but they've got a very good women's hockey team. That I've heard. Mm -hmm. They're basically the only reason the NWHL is is in existence, basically. (laughs) So all their players are just feeders for for the Women's Pro Hockey League. Anything else after that? you got some good guests coming on tonight, too, I think. So I'm, I'm excited to hear what, uh, what you yeah. guys have in, uh, coming up. So uh, Ryan and Barry will be on here uh, starting at 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 Eastern. So make sure to keep it here on Bruce Sports. Uh, remember to go and uh, comment and share below of anything we talked about as well, too. Visit our website, brewsportsnet.com, to get the latest uh, videos that we produce here on Bruce Sports. And, of course, uh, continue to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also uh, we appreciate all of you for, for tuning in today as well, too. So thanks for all the great comments, for all the great shares as well, too. Special thanks to Lee Nevis for joining us and uh, for Alfredo Muente as well, too. So he's Ryan Thies. I'm Baxter Colburn. Uh, coming up next, as we mentioned, it is the College Road Trip live right here on Brew Sports. This has been Happy Hour. Tika Griesbach is back tomorrow night for a Thirsty Thursday edition of Happy Hour. We'll see you then. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, everybody. Press this.